Hi, Tim. Uh, this is Patrick here with, with my wonderful friend, Mark. Uh, and he's been nice Hello. enough to <laughs> Patrick introduce and Mark, me. how are you today? <laughs> I, I'm doing great. I, I, you know, we, we'd really like to meet you, Tim, uh, in, in, a way, okay. in a way that maybe we haven't, or the internet hasn't met you before. Um, you know, to start off, I, I saw your Twitter profile, uh, and it said that you, you work for the internet. Can you tell us a little more about that? I do. I, uh, I work for and on the internet uh, almost exclusively. The internet is the only medium that will have me. Um, <laughs> this is the, uh, this is the, I currently work for the Young Turks, who, uh, uh, web online news, progressive news, Very cool. uh, heavily featured on YouTube. Um, before that, I worked for a company called Gamer Vision, also on the internet. So I have a storied history with the internet. So you and the internet have, uh, gotten along for some time. Um, so that Gamer Vision was kind of your first uh, foray into, into kind of online media? Uh, yeah, uh, right after I graduated college, I uh, did the freelance film thing for a while, kicking around New York, Los Angeles, Pittsburgh. Um, and then I uh, went home and settled down for a little bit back in suburban Pennsylvania, and there's where I found Gamer Vision. Wow, so that's, it, it all kind of came back to home. Um, <sighs> So, you know, in your time at Young Turks, uh, you know, it, it's, it seems as if you're kind of one of their, I don't know, personalities. Is, is that the right kind of word to use? Uh, I, Tim, thought, that you, I thought you were searching for Prodigy, Maven, <laughs> Wonder Kid. Yes, I, I have been a personality on that network. Cool. So then um, if, if you don't mind, you know, maybe some of the people there don't know um, kind of maybe some quirky, some fun things about you. We thought we would ask you some questions uh, in, in maybe like a rapid fire format, if you're cool with that. Okay. Um, uh, only if I can answer them in a very slow, deliberate format. No, that's, that's what yes. we were hoping for. Uh, you <laughs> know, ask then, as quickly as you like. <laughs> I'll get my voice out of the way so yours can, can reign supreme. Um, would you rather sweat mayor or have to poop a softball? Mm, definitely uh, poop a softball. Poop a softball. Yeah, I think you know what that I tells think, me a lot about you too. I think my anus can handle it. I, I do. I, I <laughs> really think that? it's up to the challenge. Did you have some practice? And I'm not a mayo guy, so I really wouldn't want that. It's everywhere. just eggs and oil, Tim. It's eggs and oil. Yeah, I'm just saying. I think the I think the softball's one and done. <laughs> Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Okay. No, I see that. We, we can we can accept that answer. Uh, would you rather have a dragon or be a dragon? Mm, definitely be a dragon. I think that's fair. You know, you don't want to be. I think, I think people assume that when they live in a world with like dragons and Pokemon, that they can control them like they imagine they can. And I think if I wasn't a dragon, I'd just get eaten by a dragon. There's a good chance. And it's interesting in that honesty. you mentioned Pokemon because that's some relation to our next question here. Uh, would you rather uh, never have to worry psychic? about money or <laughs> live in a world with Pokemon? So I, th I think we, we've gotten some kind of answer from you already, right? Uh, no, I would, l I would have to never worry about money. Yeah. I think inherently real life Pokemon is cruel and animal <laughs> abuse. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, it is. If it were real, we would be battling animals all the time, <laughs> seemingly to the death for sport and money, yeah. That's we, uh, that's not a great place to live. They can heal in the ball. Is that a bad thing? <laughs> yeah, I mean, pain is real. Pain is a real thing. They don't just faint and then be revitalized at a, a pokey center. I mean, that's how it works, but I, <laughs> I think it would be a little more visceral than that. I, th I think maybe your next project is going to be some kind of real-life Pokemon uh, drama. That's it. Uh, hey, the, I think the demand is there, yeah. I, I saw you in that Zelda kind of flick. You were, you seemed to be an extra or something like that. So you, know, Gosh, you had that experience. Was good. Forever ago, yeah. I like that. One of Game Revision's finest uh, <laughs> exports, yeah. That was, that was quite funny. So, I mean, now, now we're going to give you some, uh, maybe a little bit more gamer-focused. Uh, um, console or PC? Uh, I have more consoles than I do a proper gaming PC. Wow. Back in, <laughs> back in college, I was very much a, a PC gamer with uh, World of Warcraft and uh, other MMOs. Uh, but since uh, since leaving that, I've stuck mostly to an Xbox 360, a PS3, and now we have a Wii U, which my wife and I are enjoying Ooh. a whole lot. So a then, lot. you know, dig it into that. I, I, <laughs> that's that's it's pretty. That? It's pretty cool that you and your wife game together. That's that's uh, that's really exciting. It's I I really enjoy it. It is a relatively new development. Very cool. Um, so we're having fun with that. I don't think I would buy, and, and I, I, I don't want to have a statement here on this uh, particular show, but I don't think I'll buy an <laughs> Xbox One or a PS4. I think if I spend more money on, uh, on gaming, it'll be a proper PC. 
Well, I guess it, you know, it makes sense. So then, you know, my next question was going to be Nintendo, Microsoft, or Sony, but I guess you've kind of gone the Wii U direction. Is that, is that the, is that the I sentiment? Think there's, when I'm looking at the Venn diagram of gaming, there's so much overlap between Xbox and PlayStation and PC. Mm -hmm. And in that category, yeah. the PC yeah. wins. Yeah. But yeah. Nintendo does something that nobody else does. It's not like there's a couple of exclusives that I need that console for. Nintendo is all Nintendo exclusives. So if I have a PC and I have a Wii U, I think I have everything covered. I just don't have the PC yet. Yeah. Well, I, I wish you luck. You know, uh, your Nintendo machine is probably getting a lot of a lot of work right now. It's a. Uh, it has such long. I mean, you're still you, there. I don't hear anybody. I still play Super Nintendo games. I still play Nintendo games. Even GameCube, like Super Smash Brothers Melee, is still one of my favorite games of all time. I'm all alone. And it doesn't matter that it's the super high anti elazing you know, best graphics in the entire world because it's a quality game. And I think that's something that you know, with the PCs and with the, you know, with Xbox 360 and stuff like that, graphics are so 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 important. But the thing is, is that Nintendo really know, knows how to make a great great stories and just great characters and a, just a fun game. Yeah, It's almost very novelty. They're not batting a thousand, but they're really good at what they do. Yeah. Well, it's almost like a, it's like a toy in and of itself, right? Like where, where Xbox and PlayStation are these machines that are like, you know, doing all kinds of, uh, you know, really high, high intensive uh, processing. And, you know, with Nintendo, it's almost like a toy. It's like a Nintendo machine. You know, it's like, it, that's the only thing it, you have it for. You have it for your Smash and your, Maybe some Star Fox or Metroid or right. whatever, right? I don't, I don't think Nintendo would appreciate using those terms, but, <laughs> but yeah, they, 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 for the most part, don't focus on the like multimedia family entertainment center all in one package that Sony and Microsoft are. And I guess it's clear they don't need to if you know all of us are sitting here saying, well, we still really like it. You know, sales may not be super hot, but I mean, we're all yeah, nerds I mean, and we like it. If they can run their company on just us three, I'm sure that'll be fine. Their, their sales department may be a little more worried than you. As long as we don't make any YouTube videos with Nintendo stuff, we'll be fine. Uh, oh. Paper or plastic, Ooh. Tim? Uh, paper. Thank God. Regular, uh, regular hippie. Uh, Calvin or Hobbs? Uh, Hobbs. <laughs> I heard her in the back. Uh, fa <laughs> favorite Seinfeld character? Uh, George. Mm, can't stand you. <laughs> uh, Seinfeld is a big uh, a big staple in my family, and uh, I think George uh, is the character that we most related to because he's a lot like my dad, and my dad's name is George, and that's, <laughs> is, that's do you have just a favorite how quote? it worked there. All his jokes just resonate so much more with us. Yeah. So yeah. can you tell us a little bit about, you know, since you are an internet personality, uh, you probably browse the internet <laughs> with regularity. Uh, what's your favorite subreddit? Oh, geez. Uh, lately, I've been spending way too much time on uh, legal advice slash legal advice. Um, I just am so context. enthralled. I'm running that down. <laughs> yeah, with, what's the context? <laughs> with the people that go to Reddit in dire straits. They are in trouble. Their brother got arrested. <laughs> There's somebody infringing on their property rights. Their neighbor is building a barn on their property and they need to know what they can do. The local sheriff is giving them trouble because they're black and they live in like it's crazy the amount of problems that these people have. And the fact that they go to Reddit and Reddit is just full of advice for them. The only. The only thing that disappoints me is when the like the poster stops updating and I don't know what happens to their legal case like because they're in jail. Were they because forced to jail. have the baby? I don't know. I don't, it's like a little it's like a little uh, soap opera drama subreddit. Are you using any of this as like advice for yourself? You know what? I there's information, there's little nuggets that I'm squirreling away for later. I'll be like, hmm, ex extradition, interesting. I'll remember that." <laughs> Jeez. Which, by the way, you think about it, like, how many lawyers have the extra time to go onto Reddit uh, and give free legal advice? Oh, none of them are lawyers. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a 13 year old. This is what it is. Legal yeah. advice is, uh, I'm putting that directly in air quotes. So. <laughs> From 13 year olds. Yes. Know, they've, they've got the time for it, you know? So, if, if, if legal advice is your favorite subreddit, what's, what's a subreddit that maybe you enjoy that normal people use? Uh, oh, normal people. Oh, what are you I, normal people? <laughs> what do you mean, normal people? You know, there's like uh, that, like like the AMAs and the the ELI fives and the the, the Earth porns and the you know what do you enjoy? 
Uh, I don't... Let me think. I, I have to be slow and deliberate with this one. That's okay. That's what, you, that's what you promised us from the beginning. Yes, quite a bit of the Reddit experiences. Maybe not safe for the rest of the internet. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Uh, Which, by the way, th so there's a filter for all the different types of uh, subreddits, <laughs> and there's it's very clear. It's like not safe for work or safe for work. So it's it's very the Reddit use, and there was I remember there was a graph showing like what Reddit was used for, and it was just not safe for work was like the number like a hundred percent, and then it slowly dipped down into like safe for work <laughs> stuff. So Reddit really did come from watching porn. So are we are we asking you about like a sensitive pain. topic, Tim? Is this something that we shouldn't dig into? No, it's just that my knee jerk reaction was a subreddit that recently came into my life called Black People Twitter. Okay, <laughs> and. And I don't know if you could tell from this recording, but I am white. Oh. So oh. With, with this whole culture of white privilege and white guilt, uh, me enjoying a subreddit called Black People Twitter could say, oh, well, he's exploiting them. He's laughing at them. No, they're hilarious. They are the funniest people on the Internet. <laughs> I've, I've never and used the subreddit, but I might have to check it out. Uh, just peruse it for just a short while and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. It is, it is some of the best comedy on reddit so well <laughs> i don't laugh harder than i do than reading black people twitter <laughs> well, i'm excited i think my I, other my other favorite part is is that all the earth porn space porn all that other stuff I, I thought when i first saw that i was like oh they're having sex in space they're having sex on earth nope no you'll, it's you'll really it's, be disappointed by human porn that's <laughs> <laughs> that's not what you think it would be at all <laughs> just pictures of like really big pimples you're like man that thing's gorgeous like, oh, like awesome. pretty eyes and interesting noses. And, yeah. <laughs> oh, that. I mean, for some people, yeah. So then, um, you know, you spend your time, some, time, some of your time on Reddit. You probably were a kid at some point as well, uh, you know, maybe watching some, some TV shows like, like the Ninja Turtles. Do you have a favorite uh -huh. Ninja Turtle? Uh, yes, Raphael. Ooh, Raphael's my really? favorite. He, you, really? he is Tell us the a badass. story. A story? Well... I mean, things are so simple when you're a little kid. It's my favorite color was red, so I preferred the red Ninja Turtle. And then <laughs> you are a then, really complex guy, Tim. From there, you can I can associate more with the badass character, the badass for you know Saturday morning cartoon Ninja Turtles. <laughs> but you know the you know the rebel without a cause, the right. you know the guy who shakes things up. He's not he's not the dumb joke man like Michelangelo is. Although Michelangelo is great and. I don't know, they've all sort of taken on different personalities and different iterations of the show and movies and whatnot, but let's stick with Raphael. Put my so money... So on, Tim, real, put, yeah. real quick, did, did you ever lose a sigh? Did I ever lose a sigh? I lost a sigh. <laughs> I lost my sigh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you, no, you do I, know uh, that he was, the, he was the original leader, right? Like, wasn't that the thing? <sighs> I, I mean, I can't speak to that one way or okay. the other. I... You know, Leonardo's always been, you know, hashtag yeah, Leonardo. Leonardo has yeah. always been my leader, but um, uh, there's, there's you know, sometimes Leo. in the beginning, I think they're all hashtag wearing red. Not my Leo. You know, the, apparently the new comics and the new uh, TV show are quite popular. It's it's kind of interesting, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I would assume that in the there was a time. Yeah, I remember whenever I see like a dark, gritty version of the Ninja Turtles, they all have the same color on, and it's yep. red. I don't know if that's like a Sin City stylistic choice, or they're all actually wearing red. Um, maybe, maybe but I do know what you're talking about. Okay, I cool. do understand. Yeah, I, I will say that one of my favorite lines from the movies, and I forget which Ninja Turtle movie it is, is like they're going to rescue Raphael because he's been captured by I think the Foot Clan, and they're sneaking around, and I think Donatello says, oh, "It's quiet," and then Michelangelo says, "Maybe too quiet," and he's <laughs> like, "There's Raph," and Michelangelo says, "Maybe too Raph." <laughs> <laughs> So I think that is like the eighty or nineties, like the the old uh, the classic Ninja Turtles movie. That's a great movie. Yeah, yeah. So I, I quote that one a lot, and no one ever knows what I'm talking about. Hopefully, you can so redirect them to this stop. video. Maybe I should stop. No, you yeah. can send them to this video and say, "Now you know." Yes, I'll just carry around the the, the URL for this video <laughs> in my pocket all the time and hand it to people whenever I choose to use it. It'll that just one. be on a business card. <laughs> <laughs> It's a QR Embossed. code. <laughs> yeah. Bone on white. <laughs> What's your favorite Nickelodeon show? I do a reference now. Growing up. Sorry, What's my Mark. Favorite, 
No, is that whenever I do a reference now, when I email, I'll also include either the meme or the link to the video <laughs> in order for people to understand what I'm saying. Which is why Mark's the most popular one in the office. Everybody's like, that joke you sent me is great. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what they said. That's yeah. exactly what, they said. what what was your favorite Nickelodeon show growing up, uh, Tim? I'm trying to remember which ones the Nickelodeon ones were. Well, or or any classic. Or any. Oh. Well my my get up early on Saturday morning was um for the X Men animated series cartoon. Yes. That was my jam. So good. That oh. was my jam. I don't know if it holds up. I have I so have good. Uh, so good. given it a watch here and then since adulthood, and I've enjoyed it. There are some cartoons that really don't hold up, um, but that opening theme song will always hold up. We should probably, yeah. like, uh, we'll edit it in, I assume, at this point. No, I'll, do it. I'll do it now. <laughs> that always gets me jazzed for cartoons. Always, well, always. we didn't. It's it's almost better than the original. You got. They should have hired you to sing the original song. Well, I mean, I was only seven at the time, so maybe <laughs> you would have been maybe fine. That was Just like dancing around in your uh, like pajamas. I can I can see it. Uh, favorite YouTube channel? And you, like favorite I, 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 well, YouTube. We channel. already know the Young Turks is your favorite. So yeah, what second. YouTube channel is this going up on? Can I can I pitch that? Is that Mark Register and the Change? That's my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's a new one. <laughs> yeah, there's Patrick, the, which one are we using? Uh, it's called Interview Twitch. We're actually, um, so you're the first uh, kind of test interview. Um, ah, yes, of course. And it'll probably never air ever, but it's the first. It's the first. It's fantastic. And uh, yeah, so we're going to be interviewing a number of, of different people on Twitch uh, and, and in, in new media in general. So since you've been streaming on Twitch, um, you you kind of, um, you were the first person we, we thought of, you know, somebody that's getting into this and. Um, is being kind of newly exposed um, to this kind of media, we thought you would be a great person to talk to. Oh, am I exposed? I, geez, I didn't even think that was in frame. Oh, God. Wow, sorry, it's, guys. It's not your fault. We all appreciate it. You can it. blur that out. <laughs> That's the best part about these things, is that I have no pants on, and you, can, you can't tell except for me. <laughs> Just ruined your cover. Yeah, I appreciate you telling us. Now I know how much to be skeeved. I have a mental picture. It's in the way of the Snap. interview. Okay, I'm sorry. Snap. Uh, so, I guess, you know, Tim, do you want to kind of, um, get, I guess, dig in and tell us a little bit about, like, you know, your, maybe your first time in front of a camera, you know, um, you know how, maybe, uh, you know, how, how you feel streaming on Twitch, just uh, kind of dig in a little bit to, um, I don't know, this, this whole personality thing we've been talking about. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's kind of a, an overly used term, but it, and it does seem like you are an internet personality. So, you know, how did you become that? You know what I mean? Like, how are you comfortable being this person? Well, like, uh, like our friend Mark Register, I come from a theater background. So in, uh, in middle school, I was part of a, an improv group. In high school, I joined some productions. So, you know, I, I cut my teeth there, you know, getting comfortable in front of crowds and groups, um, becoming addicted to um, applause, affirmation, adulation, that sort of, course. of thing. Um, uh, after that, I, mean, I went to college for film and video, where I took a role more behind the camera. But, you know, like most college departments, it becomes, you know, very incestuous. Everyone's in everyone else's yeah. films. Mm -hmm. um, so I had yeah. a chance to do a little acting. Um, after that, I mean, uh, I mean, this Twitch thing is new because you... For one, you don't have that ability to rehearse, to practice, to go over your lines. There are no lines. Um, you don't have time to edit. Uh, you don't. You you can't cut out the takes you don't like. You can't focus on the ones you do like. You can't get the read or the performance just right. There is no performance. It's just you. So rather than be an actor or be a personality you just have to kind of be yourself and be comfortable with that and and own whatever it is that spills out of your gaping maw at any given time <laughs> um uh but then there's that immediate feedback there's that little bar on the right hand side where people tell you how good you are how much you suck or right away mm -hmm. um and you can interact with them and respond with them and have a dialogue and that's fun and that's interesting and i like it so is that kind of your your favorite your favorite part about that is that that um, 
you're almost you're exchanging like reach for intimacy it seems you know like you're you're able to expose yourself to the smaller number of people expose um but you know interact with them a little bit more intimately right uh yeah yeah i mean i figured i mean i got into streaming because i enjoy playing video games in my free time and i figured other people would like to watch me do that mm -hmm. <laughs> and i was going to play video games anyway why wouldn't i stream them so did you find it, just it made sense like 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 when you normally game with you know with your wife versus now you know when you guys sit down to to stream do you find the experience to be the same or different than than it was oh vast vastly different vastly okay. different i have i feel the need to talk mm -hmm. to be engaging to be on i have you know better posture otherwise i would just be a slouch you know on my sofa just kind of barely moving my fingers and wrists as much as is necessary <laughs> to complete whatever tasks the video game has told me to do. Right. But now I want to be um, engaging, entertaining. I want, I want to interact with my wife and with the people watching at home. Uh, we play online, so sometimes the people in the chat room are the people that I'm racing against or playing against or playing with. <laughs> and, and that's fun to, to have that kind of worldwide reach, that interaction. So is this something that you think, um, like the more you do it, is it something that you kind of want to, like, do you, do you find yourself kind of thinking about it more and, and kind of uh, almost, you know, uh, I don't know, are you hungry for it now? Or, or you know, is it, is it, are you finding it maybe not to be what you, what you expected? Uh, yes, I'm definitely more eager to stream more often, uh, to stream different games with different people and have different experiences. Although I am very glad that I can turn the camera off and turn off my internet connection to whatever I'm playing and just be by myself with that classic video game experience that I've had for, you know, 20 years. <laughs> so when you mention that, like, what's like, um, when you, you know, when you think of like the classic, you know, video game experience for Tim Frisch, the thing that defines him as a gamer, like what's the game that, that you go back to, you know, is there a game that you play over and over again or, you know, something that you love? Jeez, uh, I just recently bought uh, Metroid Prime again because it was on sale on the Wii U. Yes. That's that's a game that I love. And uh, right before that, geez, what was I playing? Games that I go back to. I don't know. There there are there are Zelda games that I've played multiple times. I find myself replaying uh, Super Mario RPG every five years or so. <laughs> nice. That's just so good. Yeah. Um, and I've also been playing a lot of Hearthstone these days, which is not really entertaining to watch or play or, or commentate on. I mean, there are Hearthstone streams. They just don't do it for me. I don't think I'd stream that. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of people are watching those, though. Yeah. It's just too... I don't know. I can't... I can bring myself to watch someone control an avatar and move around a you know a beautiful world or or two D plane on the on the internet. I can't bring myself to watch someone draw cards because just play it's, cards. Is is it but because do, of RNG? Uh, the you RNG do that with Magic the Gathering. It's it's partially due to the RNG and the okay. fact that like yes, there is a lot of skill that is involved in that game, but there's still a substantial amount of luck. Right. So, you know, I mean the best players win because they're the best players not because they're the luckiest players mm -hmm. so i don't i don't i don't want to disperse dis, uh besmirch the uh the hearthstone community obviously right well i mean they're talented dudes it's uh, just there is some rng involved sorry mark and yeah and I, I enjoy the hell out of that game yeah so what's rng <sighs> random number generation okay so that you know cool, it's like you. you know what card are you going to get next um it could be any of the cards in your deck right so uh yeah there's a certain i also uh, unfortunately, I'm also I have uh, tendencies towards completionists, completionism. So I tend to sit down and play a game, and whether I try to complete it fully, hundred percent on the first playthrough or the second, uh, I find myself like comparing notes with uh, you know other players on the internet, looking at walkthroughs, <laughs> just just so I can absolutely know that I found every secret that there mm -hmm. is to find in the game and got every achievement and did everything. So if I streamed everything, you know, half my stream would just be me, me looking at a laptop, right. scouring through forums with the game on pause and the idle animation going. So nobody wants to watch that. I'll keep that to me. That'll be Tim time. This is, yeah, those are the special <laughs> Tim times, right? That's yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So then, like you know, you've been kind of talking about this like games to stream. You know, you, you've kind of talked about the games that you you maybe wouldn't want to stream. 
uh, and you, you've, you've found some success with streaming some Nintendo games. Are there other games that you're like, man, I really want to play that, but I just can't because my computer's not good enough or, you know, for whatever reason? I mean, my, my wheelhouse is, uh, like, the I love Bethesda games. I love Skyrim. I love Fallout 3. Um, what I really want to do that I'm unable to do right now is um, join the mod community. I want to incorporate all those super high definition mods, super photorealistic things, you know, adding content to the games, adding dungeons. I just don't have a PC that can that can do that. I, you know, I'm on medium to low settings with what I got. So mm -hmm. there's there's no way I can kind of dip into that without spending a little bit of money. So then if we take and a I pause know. here and we, we can send a pitch out to anybody that's listening and say, Tim needs a new <laughs> PC. And if he'll say your name on camera if, if you give it to him. Yeah, I, I mean, it only works with porn stars. <laughs> I could take my shirt off if that's what it takes. He's talked about exposing himself before. Well, we've I, I'm not yeah. above that. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't expect anyone to send me any computer <laughs> components or any sort of money. Um, it would be super easy to find my PayPal. It's timfrish at gmail.com. <laughs> <laughs> Address. <laughs> So okay, so you know this the whole money. So then you know we talked about Bethesda. I mean this this is kind of relevant then, right? You heard about the um, I assume their their E three conference, right? Uh, yeah. So then, are you excited? Are are you expecting uh, Fallout Four this year? I, I've been expecting Fallout Four <laughs> for several years now, so I, I I'm not waiting with bated breath. Right. Uh, I I'm sure it will happen. Uh, I'm sure it will be good. Uh, what I'm not sure about is what I never put too much stock in is what you see at E3. Right. I have seen so many games be misrepresented by that initial push from the developer and the publisher at E3, and then what comes in the box years to months later is a vastly different experience. So I'm not worried about it. The um, uh, the biggest one that comes to mind right now is uh, the internet is all abuzz that the Order 1866 mm. is only a five hour campaign, mm -hmm. um, and that a substantial chunk of that five hours is cinematic cutscenes, which look gorgeous. And I don't know what sort of credence to give these rumors, but that was a game that I was excited to maybe play someday, even though I don't have a PS4. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, I mean, so I, I watched a couple of live streams this morning. It went live at 5 a or 5 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, um, and a lot of the impressions seem to be, you know, it, it is quite short, um, and you know, the it's a lot of like uh, quick time events, you know, like button pressing. Um, yeah. So I guess you're you're kind of getting accustomed to games disappointing you, specifically this year, you know, with every I, release failing essentially. I That's so really I so rarely buy games when they're brand new when they're sitting on the shelf at 60 bucks mm -hmm. because I know that the quality of the AAA titles these days is such that if I wait three months I'm gonna find it for 40 or even 30 yep so that's how quickly the games go down in price because they don't all feel like $60 games anymore yeah I mean I just got I just uh, picked up on uh, you know Xbox gold arcade for free this month uh, Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons, which is a little indie game, and it's only five hours. You could probably do it in a lot less than that. Um, but it's an excellent game. It's not a $60 game, but mm -hmm. they made an excellent $10 video game that only takes five hours, and I'm totally super satisfied with it. And it took you five so, hours. You're not like, oh, shit, I have to spend 100 hours playing a game yeah, to get my yeah. $60 worth out of this thing. Yeah, and there are games that I have far and away gotten way more out of than I spent. Mm -hmm. you know, you can, can you, can you, you name get, any? Like, would you, would you, you be able to talk about any? I mean, you can get a copy of Mass Effect these days for four bucks, <laughs> and I could, I could sink, you know, 100 hours into that game. Yeah. I mean, you can get Fallout 3 for five bucks. So, you know, maybe I'm just romanticizing the previous generation because I have so much of it uh, in my life, mm -hmm. but uh, there's a lot of good games on PS3 and Xbox 360 that are just the right price right now and still so so good that's i i think you know encouraging people to go back and play those games like i, I just played journey last week uh for the first yeah, time yeah right I, I would have spent probably a hundred dollars for that experience like candidly like that was one of the best gaming experiences i've ever had and it took my wife and i played it together and it took three four hours i yeah, i'm so happy i played it like i'm so happy I played there it. is so much stuff going on in like quote unquote indie games these yeah. days now some of these are you know have the 
you know, the budget and the support of, you know, big developers and studios and publishers and whatnot, but the, they're smaller gaming experiences and they're more refined. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, I don't have to buy, you know, the last couple of carbon copies of Call of Duty to get a good video game experience. I can, yeah. I can buy something a lot shorter, a lot smaller, a lot cheaper and a lot better. So. I, I appreciate the sentiment, Tim. You know, I think it's good to support, you know, indie gamer or developers, you know, pe people that are trying to do something a little bit different that's not the standard AAA title. One of the uh, one of the things that I've been watching a lot recently is the uh, the Twitch uh, the Twitch stream cast. It, it happened in January, but um, uh, AGDQ Awesome Games Done Quick. It was like a, a six day uh, a six day uh, event of just uh, speedrunners and speedrun streamers oh, cool. playing these games as fast as they most human lot humanly possibly could in front of a live studio audience to raise money to uh, for the Prevent Cancer Foundation. And so they have, you know, six days worth of streamers on, on, on their channel right now. And I've just been pouring through them. I, I've seen so many good games that I want to get. I've seen so many talented, talented uh, game players and streamers. And they're, they call themselves runners, runners, speed runners. Um, it's pretty cool. But that's, that's the sort of thing where you can put, a, you know, a game that was made by one guy in front of the eyes of a million people. And then they see how good that game is that was just you know, made by one guy and, and has this community out there already for it. It's really beautiful. It's, uh, I, I also happen to watch a ton of that. Did you see, uh, like, what was your favorite one? Like, what's, did you have, like, a favorite speed run? Oh, man. Uh, the, uh, the guy, there was a guy that did um, Infamous to uh, Festival of Blood. I think that's what it is. It's like a little vampire expansion on Infamous 2. Mm -hmm. uh, but when he was there, he set the world record. Wow. And at the at the end, he uh, he like got a little misty, a <laughs> little, little single tear rolling down his face. That was a good moment. And the um, there was some guys that streamed uh, Battle Block Theater, and they had the developers on Skype with them while they were playing through. And what these guys were doing to the game astonished the guys that made it. Wow. There was a lot of that. like, what, what, what did you just do there? You shouldn't be able to do that. That's, <laughs> I didn't put that in the game. What did you just do? <laughs> and uh, every, everyone involved with that was super fun, super fun and super funny. So if, if you only watch one, I highly recommend Battle Block Theater on AGDQ 2015. I'm going to check that one out. Yes. Wow. It's, it, uh, so, so you're into speed running. It seems like you're a pretty cool guy, Tim. You know, it's a, no wonder you're a personality on the internet. Um, I mean, that's what I have on my resume. Just, <laughs> just a fresh, pretty, pretty, pretty cool, cool guy. guy. <laughs> I got the job, so <laughs> that's good enough. Uh, so, if you if you had like a piece of advice to give to to somebody that's maybe interested in in kind of being the next Tim Frisch, you know, somebody that wants to <laughs> to to you know kind of be a be a personality like yourself, what would you uh, what would you say to them? I don't know. It's a position that's available. I'm happy to pass it on. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, uh, any you know, well, you're welcoming all applicants. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I'm sure that I can find somebody better at it than me. Um, you're a humble uh, guy. I, <laughs> <laughs> uh, if if you know, I'm I'm new to the Twitch streaming community, uh, but so far my my experience has been great. Um, I've been welcomed with open arms. Uh, it's. There are a lot of experiences that I thought would be scary getting into new communities, getting into streaming and Twitch and, and, and speed running, but uh, everyone's, for the most part, is super nice and super helpful. Um, they all have good advice and, and tips and tricks. They've all been there before. You know, if you're doing something, there's been a million people that have done it before, so all you have to do is ask for their advice, and they're, they're happy to give it, for the most part. Um, you know, sometimes gamers have this reputation of being like mean little shits, and that's what I've heard. And f some are, yeah. Some. Uh, oh, I'm sure there are. It's just amazing how infrequently I run into them. But so. it's not just gamers; it's people in general. Yes, there are little shits. There are helpful people. So it's not just. I mean, it's not. Uh, yeah, there are some great people. And every time that you know uh, Tim and I have streamed or Francis and I have streamed, usually, especially if we don't know what we're doing, people chime in and say, "Hey, this is how you do it." They're actually incredibly helpful. So the people that I've met on Twitch are actually more helpful than anything. There are very few people that like log on to a Twitch stream for the sole purpose of belittling and making fun of people. 
So for the most part, they want to see what you're playing and they want to see you. So that's why they're there. Give them what they want. It's a really great piece of advice, you know, for Amen, brother. for anybody that's like afraid to stream on Twitch. Like, I think that's a big hang up. You know, oh, the Reddit community is going to be mean to me. Um, they're going to call me an asshole or you know whatever. Yeah, I'm not I'm there. Not I'm not anymore. there to be the best at playing a game. So if you come to the channel to look for you know someone that is a superior gamer, you're not going to find that here. But I don't. I don't think you were actually looking for that. Yeah. So then you know. Uh, when when you're doing these streams and um, you know interacting with these these kind of impressionable youths or people that are on on Twitch, uh, is is there is there a certain kind of sentiment that that you pass along to them? Like um, I don't know, like you know, wh- like what is your kind of brand on the internet? You know, like, are you the funny guy? Are you the uh, are you the I don't know, like the easy to approach dude? Are you the Raphael who's angry and like mean to people on Twitch? <laughs> You know, what's your thing? Brooding, tortured soul. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I I think I'm funny. Uh, my wife may disagree. <laughs> um, it's, I mean, there's something about sitting in front of a camera that just get, makes you uh, an augmented version of yourself. Everything's, you know, turned up to 11. Um, <laughs> so sometimes I, I think it would be best if I dialed that back a bit. But for the sake of entertainment and, you know, I, I, you just feel an obligation when people are watching you to do something. Like when you go to the zoo and like the otters aren't swimming around and having fun, you'd be like, this is not worth the price of admission. Those right. otters are just being otters. <laughs> Lazy so, otters. <laughs> some, sometimes I feel like I have to, you know, do tricks and swim around and crack open oysters on my chest. If, if that's what the people want to see, then I guess right. I guess that's what Tim, I do. I've yet to see that on your stream, so I'm looking forward to that. You're not watching at the right time. <laughs> <laughs> so then, you know, uh, Tim, I, I guess, do, do you have any, um, any, uh, I guess, like like thanks to say, like is you know, is there um, are there people that you can say like, man, like this person really helped me, like they're they're the gatekeeper that unlocked all these doors for me, or man, they they really kind of helped me get to the next level, you know, it's, I I imagine, you know, it's like, what what happened, you know, who who did you meet to kind of who influenced you along the way? Oh geez, so that's that's a, a heavy and large question, and anyone that would watch this video. Uh, may feel slighted that I didn't mention them, and uh, rightfully so. I have uh, so many people to thank that got me to where I am today. Yeah, obviously, you start with your parents and your family and your siblings and you know close friends. Uh, a lot of, as far as you know, production goes. As far as being on film and using film and 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 my career. I mean, there's countless teachers and professors and people that have shaped who I am in, in more ways than just professional. Um, They've also helped you expose yourself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I've exposed myself to a lot of people. So I have them to thank for If you're going to get on the internet and people are going to like you, you're going to have to put yourself out there, right? Like I imagine yeah. somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Tits or GTFO. <laughs> the people want. So then uh, I have, I have a, Kind of an important question for you here. Um, good, because all the other ones seemed very trivial. I was once Ooh, watching. I'm glad we're getting the good stuff. Uh, a stream with you in it, and in it you were talking about your mustache uh, and your beard, and how yes. you had some issues connecting one to the other. So you had to grow your mustache a little bit longer. I'm also faced yeah. with this issue. Do you have any yes. advice to people like us? Oh, geez. Um, make it's sure hard. that you. Yeah, yeah. What uh, what he's referring to is these little gaps in between my mustache and my beard and my little soul patch area thing and the chin beard area. Uh, they don't grow hair. There's no hair there. There's no beard. It's just face. Um, but that feels like such a half-assed beard, so you want that fullness, that, that big, you know, Brian Williams beard. <laughs> <laughs> that I'll never achieve. Um, so what you do is you grow the mustache a little bit longer on the edges to connect down to the beard, and you grow the soul patch a little bit longer to connect down to the chin, and you hope nobody brings it up on an interview <laughs> on the internet. And um, It was one of the funniest things I've seen on the internet, <laughs> as you yeah, claim. Yeah, I mean, I have a little comb that came with my clipper <laughs> set 
that I comb out my beard and my mustache and my make sure everything's in order. I don't have little stray hairs sticking up all over the place because that's that's when people know. That's when people know that you're up to something. <laughs> this guy's shady. Yeah. So, Mark, do you have any other questions for Tim? Are you uh, are you feeling like you need yeah. to to ask him something? Uh, I feel like I don't really know Tim, but uh, I have two questions for Tim. Is first off, what is your favorite Reddit meme? <laughs> Man, I have such a soft spot in my heart uh, for this obscure little meme of a kid on a front porch eating a banana. <laughs> you remember that one? I'm trying to remember no. what his name was. I think it was like Jackson. <laughs> was he had a sad face and was he overweight? No, no, he was wearing sunglasses and a little yellow raincoat. <laughs> and and the, the whole Reddit thread, the, the initial thing was, this, you know, this is Jackson. He showed up on my front step, asked for a banana and left. <laughs> just some little neighbor kid that knocked on the door and asked for a banana. Um, but the picture was just so perfect and it was used in such good ways in the weeks following. It was one of those little flash in the pan things. You could go a year without seeing you know, to, that again. I to look and then my other question is, um, what is your favorite bad joke? My favorite bad joke. Gosh, all my jokes are bad. How do I pick just one? I don't know. I'm such a fan of just the lamest puns. Um, dad jokes is another great subreddit that I frequent just because that's my kind of humor. Those, those puns that get more groans than laughs. Uh. Well, give us one. Give us one. Give you one. Doesn't have to be the best. Just give us one. Don't give it to us. Sell it to us. Oh jeez! And if there's only one joke coming to mind, and it's good, it's a good pun. Then do it. Ah, oh, jeez. Okay, so I don't know if this is the most upvoted comment on Reddit, or it's been supplanted, but there was a story about uh, a guy who was in a college psychology class, and he saw a porn star that he recognized in in the class. And, but he wasn't sure if it was her, and the, the internet wanted him to talk to her, and and the uh, and basically uh, the solution was, you know, go go uh, send send a cryptic, uh, you know, um, philosophy. Was it actually psychology or philosophy? It was philosophy. Send send a, a you know a philosophy term about what you're learning to the porn star's Twitter and see how she reacts. And the next line after that was, well, wouldn't that be putting Descartes before the whores? <laughs> and that's good. That was so it was so perfect, and it makes me think that it was all a big setup. <laughs> just for that um, joke. <laughs> just for that line is this guy made like five different Reddit accounts to have this conversation that led up to that joke. <laughs> Descartes before the horse. Not Reddit's that gonna porn love stars this. are whores. I would never say no. that. No. Even though they do have sex for money, it's not. It's different. <laughs> Here, Tim, can I can I try to share a joke with you that you may be able to tell someone today? That's a, that's a groaner. Um, yes, I'm so excited. It it isn't good. Um, awesome. All the better. <laughs> Why was the EDM DJ a terrible fisherman? Why is the idiot? Because oh, he oh. always drops the bass. <laughs> is that it? Did yes, I get it? you did. You're yeah. so good. <laughs> That's good. I like that. I like Gets that. me every time. Yeah. All right, Patrick, wrap us up. Well, we are wrapping. Um, thank you, Tim, for your time uh, and you know your your kind of funniness and personality and exposing yourself to us. We really appreciate it. Uh, do you have it's any final been words? My extreme pleasure to do so. Um, no, I, I just, oh, hold on, my alarm is going off. There we go. Nobody saw that. The behind the curtain, ignore the man behind the curtain. Um, uh, no, as, as long as uh, I can keep on uh, playing video games and getting people to laugh at me, I'm going to keep streaming. But when that happens, then I guess that's it for well, me. Well, I'll be sure to watch you, Tim. Yeah, I, I certainly enjoy it. Gosh, I hope a couple people do. <laughs> well, thank you so much, and you know, thank you, Mark. Um, you know, for, for being our, our beautiful kind of, uh, kind of the, the honey between the, the, the two sandwiches, you know, you, you're the, the sweet stuff. So thank you guys. The pro listener. That's right. Gosh, do, uh, do you eat honey sandwiches? Honey and peanut butter. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh. I used to eat those. is Mark both the honey and the peanut butter? And yeah, you and I are just bread? Yeah, we're bread. We're, we're oh. really healthy bread. Like, 
Can, like a green. Can you bread. put that in my? Can you put that in my lower third? Mm-hmm. Tim Frisch, <laughs> Twitch streamer, comma bread. <laughs> He's some bread. <laughs> they actually have a, a game called I Am Bread, so you can start streaming that. I, I will check that out immediately. <laughs> well, have a an, an excellent day, guys. Um, and you know, thank you. Uh, so this has been Interview Twitch, uh, and we're signing out.